Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Chris. I have another simulation for you guys. We have not done this one yet. It's the Miami Hurricanes and Florida State Seminoles, the 2020 rosters. Taking a look at this game, they're scheduled to face each other once again this year. Miami's won three in a row. If you like that, hit the like button and also be sure to subscribe if you like what's going on with the channel, with the practice videos and also these ITU games featuring the simulation. So here we go. So we're going to do one quarter of action is the plan. And what I want to do too with this one is I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to the end of the game and see how it wraps up. Give you guys a look. I know many of you want the full game, but we'll keep it short for now. And there's some, some new guys. Look, you see three guys right there. That's Chance Williams, number 33. Corey Flagg Jr., linebacker number 11. And then Marcus Clark, Number 28, a cornerback freshman right there, making their debuts with the simulation. All three guys doing well in preseason camp, making plays, chance with the sacks. Flag is getting around, making plays at linebacker. And then Clark had a nice interception in the scrimmage. So it's good to see freshman doing well. There's another one right there, number 88, Keyshawn Smith, wide receiver out of San Diego, one that I'm very excited to see how his career goes. Good speed, can play in the return game, and is making catches. And I think it's great to see. I think Keyshawn is definitely one to watch for another freshman, Xavier Restrepo, wide receiver, doing well also. So here we go. Oh, that's tough right there. That could have been an interception on Derek King's first pass of the game. Taking a look at the offensive line. Definitely they've been mixing it up, but they like John Campbell at left tackle. And you see Jalen Knight, number four, right there. Definitely want to talk about Jalen. A lot of exciting stuff going on with Jalen. Led the team in rushing in the two scrimmages. Has a 100-yard performance. And he's doing well with his yards per carry. Over five yards a carry. Just being very productive, and I think it's great to see just that home run ability. Ability to make big plays. In him and Don Chaney Jr., another freshman running back, certainly going to be in the mix. So, here's a look at Florida State's defense. I think many of you heard their preseason. They had a preseason scrimmage where they did not allow the offense to score a touchdown. Obviously, not good for the offense, but maybe you're looking at Florida State having another very good defense, led by Marvin Wilson there in 21. But we'll see. Once again, I know Miami fans are definitely excited about this one. Each and every year, Miami's won three in a row. Last year, 27-10 win. And one thing I'll say, though, about both teams, though, definitely a new look, obviously, with Florida State and their new coaching situation. But, you know, Miami with the new coordinator and Rhett Lashley on offense and De'Ara King at quarterback. And I, there's definitely a lot of excitement that Miami – has in terms of improving their offense. Usually, maybe you make one of those big time moves with a new quarterback or a new coordinator, but they're able to do both in the same offseason. There's Brevin Jordan. Great to see him. I think that was a 20 yard catch, so that's great. Good start for Miami here on the move. You see the four wide receivers. Derek's. I was going to say, he's got to get rid of it, but good patience, and then he gets out there. Tries to run it a little bit. And Derek's had a good preseason camp, too, in terms of the scrimmages. Once again, it's based on what coaches and players are saying with not being able to be out there. But one thing that Derek that kind of stands out to me uh, recently interview him with, with Jalen Knight and he was talking about the speed of the players and he wants to race D'Eric so he definitely has a lot of respect for D'Eric's speed and I think that's a, a great sign if, if he's got that kind of speed so once again good to see out of Miami's offense here now following the sack they'll come up here on a and I think the one thing to, to watch for with Miami's offense is how many guys are able to get the ball out to getting multiple guys involved in the passing game and running game. There's Jalen Knighton and Don Chaney Jr. at running back, but obviously Cameron Harris had a really good performance in that second scrimmage. He's obviously returning as the lead back. 
But you could definitely see all three of them being in the mix during games. And it'll work itself out. If one guy's doing well, they'll definitely, you got to figure that they'll get the other, give them more carries. So disappointing right there. I know it's only a simulation, but unable to connect with Jeremiah Payton there, number 12. And Miami's going to send out the punt unit. I think at this point, I think many of you would like to see Miami go for it. You're fourth and four from the 40 going in. Maybe set up some sort of pass play, short pass play, or give the give Dierica the ability to run. But let's go ahead, Lou Headley out to punt, and we'll take a look at Miami's defense. Big thing with Florida State and their uh, and their offense. Obviously, they return James Blackman at quarterback. But they go with the new offense a little bit. They spread it out more. They're going to go up tempo. And I remember talking to Miami defensive coordinator Blake Baker in the offseason about that, that they were already starting to envision going against Miami's up tempo offense in practice and how it would help them during the season. And he identified the Florida State team as one that they feel like will help them because they're expecting Florida State to play with some tempo. So Florida State returns them. Some top receivers saw DJ Matthews there. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tap And they've got some other guys as well. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Whether it's Terrier Thompson. So here we go. Oh my goodness. I was going to say, that's a big hit. There's 24. That's Christian Williams. I thought he was going to make a, a big hit, but it looks like Brian Robinson had the hit there. There's Corbin, number zero. Curious, drop in the comments. What do you guys think about the number zero being allowed in college football? This is your first look at it if you've not seen it yet. Corbin's rocking the zero. Let me know what you guys think about that. And also, if you guys were college football players, what number would you want to wear? Whether if you're on offense or defense, what number would you wear? Drop in the comments. Always like hearing from you guys in the comment section. Nice play by Sam Brooks. Out on the outside. I think linebacker situations definitely changed a little bit in preseason camp. You're expecting Brooks to really emerge. And it's not that he's not doing well, but we're just hearing so much about Bradley Jennings Jr., number 44, returning from injury after missing last season. Definitely feels like he's going to be in the mix at that with that top group. That's Gervin Hall, 26. Great to see. I think with Gervin Hall, we don't talk about him. Or maybe, it, you know, obviously he was second on the team in tackles last year. But maybe not talked about him quite enough. There's a lot of a, a discussion at safety with Bubba Bold and Amari Carter. What are they going to do there? But I think with Gervin Hall, to me, is I want to see him make a little bit more impactful plays. Once again, second on the team of tackles last year. Here we go. It's John 496 and 15 Jalen Phillips. I know you guys are excited about Jalen. Huge sack there on third down. Great to see for the Miami defense. Forcing a punt. But going back to Gervin, I just think, you know, you want to see him take that step in terms of you know, pass deflections or even tackles for loss, interceptions, kind of forced fumble, you know, impactful plays. I feel like there were times last year where those plays could have been made. And maybe this year, you know, going into his junior year, a year of experience as a starter, he's ready to step up. And once again, make more impactful plays. It's a nice little move right there. That's Keyshawn Smith once again. I think the return game is going to be interesting to see who Miami goes with there. They got Xavier Restrepo as an option. You could put Jalen Knighton back there. You know, their punt returners, there's nobody on the team that, that returned a punt last year. But there are certainly some options. And same way with kick return. Only a couple guys returned the kick last year. 
keep accumulating first downs. And maybe you turn to the receivers. Maybe you want to see Mark Pope the there. The I'm curious who you guys would like to see back there. Drop in the comments. Talk about the return game. King on first down. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Well, certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. It's the third time they've looked at So here we go. Direction. Hopefully Miami's offense can put together a drive here right before sure the end of the first quarter. They feel like they've got something there and they want to capitalize on it. I think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot Spreading of it out. Back to throw now on second Oh, that could have... Okay, I... Could have been an interception. Could have been an interception. And then it looked like it could have been a, a catch by Miami. Right there, but it goes incomplete. Third and ten. The football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him. Florida State's defense is definitely doing well here, making it tough for Miami. So third and ten. Go shotgun. Three receivers to the right. Let's see how this works out. Okay, that's a nice. I like that pass pattern. So Jeremiah Payton on the catch. I think Asante Samuel Jr. 26 was in coverage. But that's a good play by Jeremiah. And I think that's the one thing that you should be excited about for Miami because you look at a guy like Peyton. You know, when you've got three other guys and Peyton at receiver, you're looking for that balance. You're looking for anybody to get open. And Eric has talked about that. Whoever's open, he wants to get the ball to. And so while they're not, there's, it does not look like they have a go-to receiver, obviously going into the season, maybe one emerges. And there's another one. There's D. Wiggins. Once again, multiple guys getting involved in the offense in the passing game. And I think that's going to be good, especially with a, a veteran quarterback that is used to spreading the ball around. I think having the, the balance of the four receivers and not to mention... And while they're, they're, they're the guys with the experience, I think, you know, when you see a guy like Keyshawn Smith, a, a, a freshman, so making some plays, now, it's first you know, maybe there is some, the they feel a little line. bit of pressure to succeed or else they could go that route. Or even a guy like Restrepo, who's done really good producing in the scrimmages, piling up a bunch of yards on the ground and through the air. So maybe there's some depth of being established at the receiver position, which is definitely something you're looking for in preseason camp. Looks like this will be the final play of the quarter. Maybe they'll get a touch. Okay. I thought maybe they'd squeeze out a touchdown. Okay, we still got seven seconds left. Third and four here. Once again, we're just going to wrap this quarter up, and then we'll just... I'll speed through the, the next two quarters, and we'll just see where the game takes us, and then we'll finish out the rest of the way. Oh, man, I thought he was going to be able to get out there. That's a nice tackle, though. Safety coming up big there. That's a good tackle. That's tough for Miami because it looked like Derek was going to be able to get through and get that first down. Made a cut. Just was unable to get the first down. That's how we're going to wrap it up. After one. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Cowboys in possession. So here we go. We got fourth quarter. Okay, so Miami's up 21 to 13, a minute and a half to go. Florida State is on the move. So they got second and 10 from the 27 going in. Maybe can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Miami gets a stop here. That looks like they're going to walk away with the win. And that's a good tackle. That's 11. That's Corey Flagg Jr., the freshman linebacker. And then Brian Robinson, freshman wide receiver for Florida State. So that's a good performance for Corey. I don't know if you guys saw, but it said nine tackles. So he's having a productive game. Mixing in on defense and special teams. Uh-oh. Ooh. Okay, so Bubba Bolden stops Robinson right at the one-yard line. If Miami can hold these guys, it'd be pretty impressive. Down to the one. 
with eight point lead, you're definitely want to keep them out of the two point conversion if they do allow a touchdown. Nice, nice tackle by Bubba, and that's going to be the thing with Bubba Bolden. If he's going to go ahead and and be a starter, he's definitely going to be have to definitely going to have to be able to tackle. I think he's got really good range to get his hands on the ball, but that's okay. That's a touchdown by Florida State. That's Corbin. <laughs> that number zero. I'm not gonna lie. I am not a fan of the zero. I don't care who's wearing it or what team they're on or anything like that or how good a player he is. These guys are, but the zero. I can't shake it. And I know guys wear it in basketball. And maybe it's just because it's so new, but hey, they're gonna do it. So, and then he gets the spike. Okay, the celebration's a bit much right now. But I understand these guys are excited. So okay, Miami needs to hold these guys. Two point conversion. They're spreading it out. They balance the receivers out. And then they go handoff. There's another tackle by Bubble Bolden. Great to see. Tackles like that are going to get Bubba more playing time. And I don't think it's a question mark of his game. I just think he really excels as a roaming safety where he can get his hands on the ball with interceptions. And things like that. I, he definitely has the size to be effective in the run game, right at 200 pounds. About six foot two. So, okay, so Florida State's going to have to go with the onside kick, most likely, although they have their three timeouts. But you're going to go onside here and then look to get a stop and get the ball back if you're Florida State. So down only two now, still a chance to finagle. 50 their seconds left in this game. Nice recovery. So there's Mark Pope. Nice recovery by Pope. I know everybody is excited for him. Hopefully, he'll have a big year for the Hurricanes. As he heads into his junior year here. He's seen flashes in practice and in games. Hopefully he puts it all together. So there's Yerick. Okay, 303 yards. Looks like a really good game. 27 for 45. A couple touchdown passes. I'm sure there's some rushing yards mixed in as well. I think you would take that all the time for Yerick. 300-yard performance, couple touchdowns, and the lead with a chance to win. That's a nice carry. Look at Jalen go. Okay, he goes out of bounds. That's the only negative there, but that's a big run. I like how he had his hands on the ball, didn't want to fumble it. Nice carry by Jalen. He explained his nickname, The Rooster. You can check out the channel where that nickname came from. Also, you can check out the website. I'll have something on Jalen about his favorite NFL running backs. That he likes to watch. Right back to him on first down. It was an interesting run where, because he went out of bounds, essentially, obviously Miami's moving closer. But, but essentially, they still got to get a first down. That's going to do it. Cam Harris with a nice run up the middle. That should do it. That's going to wrap it up with the timeouts situation. And this will be the last play of the game. So Miami's going to take a 21-19 win. Pierre King with a good performance. You saw a nice run by Jalen Knighton. And spreading the ball out to the wide receiver. So good, good win for Miami. So you get the sense that whatever was said I know everyone time, would take a win regardless I think how close the game is it's just a rivalry that. game where but you definitely just want to walk away with the win okay so look at that so Miami had a good fourth quarter a good second half down 10-0 at halftime comes back with the win I, and you, you guys have seen that recently in this rivalry with Miami with the comeback taking a look at some of the highlights here some of the big plays, the Brevin Jordan catch, that nice tackle by 
Bubba Bolden, the touchdown there by Corbin. And looking so at the stats here. Okay, so Miami almost 400 yards. Two takeaways, which is great to see. And then just had a good performance. Our here at Hard Rock Stadium. Dear King, Cameron Harris, John Campbell. Everybody celebrating. Appreciate everybody for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. And check out InsideTheU.com for all your coverage of the Miami Hurricanes. Thanks again.